everybody. I'm Katie Bainline. I'm the garden coordinator here at Logos Public Charter School. And I want to welcome you to our last Garden Gazette video of the year. And this is going to be a really fun one. I am so excited today to teach you all about bees. So if you have signed up for this Garden Gazette, you will receive a little packet from your ES. You will receive information about the biology of the honeybee. You will learn all about the anatomy of a worker bee. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. And you will receive information about honeybee life cycles, which are super interesting. So I'll be going over that as well. In addition, you will receive a very special bag. And in it is a honey stick to enjoy the fruits of the labor of bees, as well as a container with some modeling clay made out of beeswax. So I hope that you enjoy that. And um, let me first start out by teaching you a little bit about honeybees and their life cycle and um, their anatomy. So bear with me, I'm gonna pull up a slideshow for you all. All right. So the honeybee, if you didn't know or hadn't seen before, honeybees live in hives or colonies and every single bee has a role to play. Drones, which are, which are male bees, they work to make more bees with the queen. The worker bees work to make honey and protect the colony and the queen bee runs the whole hive and her only job is to lay eggs and make sure that the bee colony continues with baby bees. There are three types of honeybees, as I mentioned. The queen over there on the left is the biggest bee in the hive. The workers are the ones that you will always see out and about collecting nectar from flowers. So um, I don't know if you knew this, but all worker bees are females. So if you see a bee out in the world, call it a she because it's always going to be a female. And the drone here on the right is the male bee. You can recognize him. Um, you will probably not really see a drone bee out in the world, but they have really, really big eyes. So that's something you can use to identify it. So the three major parts of any insect, a bees are insects, are the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So, Starting with the head, the worker bee's head contains two compound eyes, two antennae, and a pair of mandibles, which are kind of like little hands that they use to collect things, and the proboscis, which you can see in the middle here. And the proboscis is used to suck up nectar to put in the bee's stomach. And those two compound eyes, you'll notice, are really big on both sides of their head. And they have inside them lots of little, little lenses, lots of them to see the world around them. The compound eyes are made up of thousands of tiny lenses, I just said, to allow the bee to see ultraviolet light, which is invisible to the human eye. But it's really, really important for these bees because it allows them to see flowers really close up and know where to go to get honey and pollen, or ne nectar and pollen. The simple eyes each have a thick lens. These are these tiny little eyes up here that can sense changes in brightness. Honeybee has three simple eyes on the top of its head, but only one can be seen in this picture. The honeybee's antennae are movable feelers that detect smell and movement. So those are really special for it navigating the world. The proboscis, as I said, is a straw-like tongue used to suck nectar or honey. And mandibles are a pair of jaw-like structures. Like I said, little hands, kind of also like teeth, used to knead, wax, chew honey and pollen, and bite tiny invaders when in, in defending the hive. So if you ever get stung by a bee, it's not usually because of these mandibles. We'll talk later about the stinger. They are used to defend the bee. Um, against invaders, but not really us humans. All right, the middle part of the bee is called the thorax, and it contains the flight muscles, four wings, and six legs. And I didn't get to mention this earlier, but if you get out your 
um, anatomy of a worker bee worksheet. You can kind of fill this out as you watch this video and pause my video at any time if you want to catch up with all of these little parts. All right, a honeybee has two hind wings and two fore wings. Its wings beat 250 times a second, allowing the bee to fly at speeds up to 15 miles per hour. Could you imagine that? That is faster than any human can run. A honeybee has three pairs of segmented legs used for walking, dusting their antennae off, brushing pollen off their body hairs, and storing pollen on the legs. So they have six legs as does any insect. The hind legs of a worker bee contain a pollen basket, which is a space to put pollen and collect it to bring back to the hive. Um, it's a collection of hairs where pollen is stored for transport. All right, we're on the last section of the bee. It's the abdomen. It's the honeybee's rear region that contains organs for digestion, reproduction, and respiration, as well as the worker and queen bee's stingers and the worker's wax glands. All right, the stinger. This is the thing that we are all scared of when it comes to bees, but let me just tell you that stingers are used for defense only. These sweet honeybee creatures are not out to hurt you. They are actually herbivores. They only eat plants. They do not want to hurt humans. The only time that you probably would get hurt by a honeybee is if you're bothering it in any way. Just like humans would fight back if they thought they were in danger, this honeybee wants to defend its life and its colony. So um, the stinger is actually only found in female honeybees. So the queen, which you probably won't see, and worker bees. The worker bee's barbed stinger is used for defense only, as I said. A queen bee's smooth stinger is actually used for eliminating rival queens. So queens are actually pretty vicious. They will kill um, any rival queens trying to take over their hive. So they will use that stinger for that purpose only. The honey sac is an internal stomach-like organ where nectar is stored inside the bee. This is really cool. Wax glands are located on the underside of the worker bee's abdomen. The glands form and excrete wax. So you can see that where they are in the center here. And that's where wax is stored to um, and created to make the amazing honeycombs that you see in beehives. A honeybee has four distinct life stages. So you can see that also on the honeybee life cycle worksheet that you have gotten. A honeybee has four distinct life stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. So this first one you can see is the queen lays an egg into the different cells of the honeycomb. So you can see on the bottom of each cell, there is a small little egg. After three days, the egg will hatch and a worm-like creature called larva crawls out. Worker bees who work in the hive, um, they're called nurse bees and they feed the, the larva called royal jelly. As it grows, the larva sheds its skin four to five times. On day nine, the larva spins itself into a cocoon and a worker bee seals the cocoon into the cell with wax. And this is where the amazing transformation happens with the bees. Inside the cocoon, the larva transforms into a pupa, developing eyes, legs, and finally wings. When the bee is fully grown, it chews its way out of the cell and emerges as an adult. You'll see that on day 22 of your honeybee life cycle worksheet. So did you know there are over 500 species of bees in the state of Oregon, honeybees only being one of them. A large majority of these bees help pollinate the unique crops that grow in Oregon. Honeybee colonies are very large and long lasting hives that can be easily moved to other crops and location. Farmers who need the bees to pollinate their crops 
um, rent hives from outside businesses or other farmers in order to ensure that their crops are being pollinated at a rate that will provide the appropriate yield of their crop. All right, so that's what I've got for you as far as our uh, honeybee life cycle and anatomy. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about our craft that we're going to make. So um, hang on real quick. I'm going to um, pull up for you all a picture of what the what we're going to be making with our beeswax. So while I'm pulling that up, you can pull out your beeswax and take it out of its container. So um, as you are pulling it out of your container, you'll notice that this beeswax, if you put it in your hands, it will start to get soft if you get it warm. So that's an important thing to notice about beeswax is that it will warm in your hands as you shape it. So you're gonna wanna do that. You can, I've given one for each kid. So each of you can make your own. You can make whatever you want with your beeswax. However, if you want to be really creative, you can use your honeybee life cycle sheet to help you form the different stages of the bee. So we have the egg, the pupa, sorry, the egg, larva, pupa, and finally the adult bee. So I would love to see your creations of what you make with your um, beeswax. I'm sure that they're gonna turn out great, um, whether it's a bee replica or a flower or really anything that you would like to make with your beeswax, send me a picture. Can't wait to see it. Um, and I hope that you all have a wonderful summer. I have a really exciting, a uh, slate of events for next year, 2021 to 22. We're going to be back in person twice a month and uh, lots of opportunities to learn about the wonders of the garden, get your hands dirty. And um, even in the winter time, we'll be watching some movies and reading some books together, all about agriculture and growing food. So get in touch with me, Miss Katie, if you would like to suggest any events for next year as I'm making the schedule. And meanwhile, I hope that you enjoy your um, honeybee um, beeswax, your worksheets and your delicious honey stick. Um, and I will see you all next time. Have a great summer.